Have you experienced the awesome power of the Panasonic Real 3DO system? Obviously. Presenting 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. It's time to put away your toys. 3DO from Panasonic, Gold Star, and Creative Labs. A new low price and free games. Showing graphics of Panasonic Real 3DO. 3DO. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 3DO Experience, the 3DO Retrospective Podcast, where we talk about all things 3DO, the company, and everything in between. I am Bill, and this is Threk. How are you doing, Threk? Well, Bill, I am darn toot and excited for this week. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's uh, we had yesterday off, so I'm kind of this is kind of my Monday. But um, we have a guest for this episode. Uh, Casey's back. How are you doing, Casey? Hey, thanks for having me back, Bill. Threk, good to see you. Oh, uh, always good to see you. Great. I remember when um, we first uh, met when we did episode three way back when. I, th- I know uh, the games we're going to be covering today, you would specifically highlight it as some of the ones you wanted to uh, Heck join yeah. for. Heck yeah, I love the uh, rootin' tootin' cowboy craziness and a full motion video game to boot. I, I'm all in. Nice. Yeah. Um, it's been a it's been a slow week gaming-wise. There hasn't been a ton of news uh, or anything crazy I- lately. Well, Nintendo dropped the Wii Sports in the music app. The music they app sure. is awesome. <laughs> I I like it in theory, but I just hate the fucking drip feed. Like, they're going to drip feed the music app? Like, come on, man. Yep. It's like that part I do not like. The extended playback is a great feature, but it's it like not every game, not every song has it. Mm-hmm. And, and like, even like say like i love sticker brush symphony from donkey Kong country 2 that doesn't have an extended playback and it's like why not it makes no sense i don't I, it, it has a lot of weird quirks about it that are dumb and make no sense so typical nintendo but yep. so my guess is probably in a year or a year and a half it'll be great but we're yeah. still waiting on that unfortunately i hope so like the cynical part of me feels like they part of the reason why they made this thing was just so they had an excuse to dm ca a bunch of youtubers but i mean if i mean if if see eventually if they put everything on here that'd be fantastic you know it's just like the selection of games they had at the start i'm just like this is very strange and 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 they have like this drip feed where they're just throwing random shit in there it's just like again i don't understand the thought process behind it because it's like the music app you know and unless they are like paying these like the composers behind the scenes for this because they're not crediting them on any parts of the music app which i don't like that either you know like they're crediting the fake splatoon 3 bands but they're not crediting koji fucking kondo like what are you doing guys yeah like in the uh animal crossing soundtrack they credit all of them to kk slider i'm like that's cute but um (laughs) yeah 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 poor david wise yeah but but i i guess the the counter argument is we all know who did these you know, like if you True. have the app, you have to be subscribed to NSO. So there's a good chance you know who they are. But that's still a dumb excuse. You know, like people, people need to know these names, you know, Absolutely. but Nintendo's been weird about crediting people lately, <clears throat> especially with like their games and everything. So I I don't get it. Yeah, it's I just laugh because like they, they're so weird about announcing like they added new music to like I always find out just because someone's like, oh, yeah, they added new music to. Uh, nintendo music i'm like oh what they add <laughs> like people through. just like they don't say anything that people just check like every day i'll just be like is there anything new nope i still thought the funniest was when a, a friend of the show will was like hey they added new music to nintendo music i was like oh cool what is it nice scroll open and i see it's mario wonder and i just went oh i don't care anymore <laughs> and i just immediately <laughs> like turned it off i know like like that's the thing we have the soundtracks for 64 sunshine and galaxy on that 3d all-stars but they're not in this. Yeah. Like the one time yeah. I actually would listen to them is, is on that music. app. I don't, I don't get it. And I mean, I was just disappointed weird. that they didn't put the smash music in uh, at least smash ultimate, but that kind of encompasses every Nintendo game. Anyway, and there's, so. and there's a lot of different like composers on there as well. Yeah. The version, so. I mean, they got some Mario Kart music, which is cool, but I do like the Mario Kart eight soundtrack. That is a bitchin soundtrack. And I could listen to aquatic ambiance for 
however long I want to. So see, that's, right. see, that's see, cool. that's an example of a game with the extended, a song with the extended playback that makes a lot of sense. Like, oh yeah, that drifting for an hour is magical. It's good. It's good. Poor three DS. <laughs> Poor three DS fans. No three DS. <laughs> no Wii U. Technically, no Game Boy Color. No Virtual Boy. Like Ooh, not not a lot. To, there's some decent soundtracks on there. Yeah, not 100%. Yeah, not a not a lot to show in any in like the other ones as well. Like NES has Mario One and then both versions of Metroid. Mm. Like you oh, can no, just throw Zelda it, One in there or yeah. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Ooh, I will that's say, one of my favorites. I love Mike. It's a great soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm not expecting third party stuff, but you know it's like. Like one of my like I like the the GBA version of Mario Three. I like that soundtrack a lot mm -hmm. and the fact we we only have one gba game and it's like the fire emblem game like not even advanced wars <laughs> like advanced wars has an amazing soundtrack for the gba they're gonna just gonna, like beat all of those to you threat very very slowly i mean they seem to be a little bit at least they're doing like at least one a week at least that's the what seems to be the cadence which i mean is fine i guess but Again, it, it feels like they're just throwing darts at a dartboard. They're like, okay, we'll do this one now. You know? <laughs> we'll really that, surprise them with this. Yeah, I don't... Again, I, <laughs> I, I like... It, in concept, it's amazing, but in practice, it's not great, you know? I'm just waiting again, for ne next week when it's like fucking Gyromite or something. It's like... Oh, <laughs> okay. Brad Racer. <laughs> well, that'd be kind of cool, because Nobuo Imatsu did that soundtrack. No. He did, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> I can just uh, see like know. gyro might like two tracks. It's like, hey. <laughs> and then they, did they throw Tetris in there? Is Tetris even in that? Uh, it probably, is probably won't be. Tetris yeah. is its own thing. Yeah. So probably not. I mean, Dr. Mario would have been nice. We have the Game Boy Dr. Cool. Mario, which is yeah. okay, but I like the NES Dr. Mario soundtrack more. Mm. Like, like if they ever do like the Paper Mario soundtracks, those would be or the Mario cool. Luigi. They're or coming. Christmas, Christmas is coming, Threat. Christmas is coming. I, I hope so. But once again, Sega stay winning, all right? Because Sega just has their shit on all the streaming services. And while they don't have everything, there's a lot of like, if you do like Sega Sound Team, they have mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, like old and new stuff. Like they have like all the Outrun soundtracks. And the Outrun soundtracks are fucking brilliant, especially for when they did Outrun 2 and they had like live band instrumentation of like mm -hmm. all these classic tracks. Ah, uh, so good. Love it. Yeah. Sega does what Nintendo does. don't. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, even my favorite punching bag of a company, uh, Nam uh, Bamco, put all the freaking Tales series uh, soundtracks on Spotify finally. So yeah, like, yeah. It's, it, I like the Symphonia soundtrack I really like. So Hysteria, that's fantastic. a good one. Abyss, like all of them, really. Oh, yeah. All really, really good stuff. Uh, the only other stuff news wise I saw was um, as a Spyro is finally in Game Pass. Oh, nice. Ooh. Finally, Ooh. I, I downloaded it this morning and have been messing around with it. I mean, I, I've beaten these games already. I love these games to death. So this just gives me a reason to play them on my Xbox and get all the achievements. So very, nice very go. happy about that. Uh, see, they've been drip feeding the Activision stuff on Game Pass, yeah. which could be. I've theorized before that like when they got Bethesda, they put every Bethesda game on there mm -hmm. and that was cool, but it kind of like wore off real quick. So maybe they're just trying to do a drip feed, but also it could be maybe like legal things, you know, so they don't get in trouble potentially. I don't know, but hopefully we get more Activision stuff, you know, like where's prototype, where's crash team racing, where's Tony Hawk, you know, these Ooh, kind Tony of things. Hawk. Where's all the old COD games. I want to play all the old COD games. Damn it. Well, I mean, I was surprised that that uh, cut the Black Ops Six is on it. Yeah, that's that how was I played. Kind of a bold move and and good I, for me because I wasn't going to buy it. But <laughs> me either. I played the campaign on it, so I heard it was money. you know I heard it was great, but you know I just can't not click multiplayer. So you know that's on me. It is what it is. So, <laughs> and then the only other thing I have was uh, apparently Rockstar just like dropped like a big patch for the GTA trilogy. Uh, three years later, they finally fixed things with like lighting and like controls and a lot of stuff. There's like a whole list of patch notes, and from yeah. the what from what I've seen and what it sounds like, it might actually be worth buying now. There they may go. have actually took them three years to fucking fix it, but there we are. That's <laughs> that's the gaming industry nowadays. Better late than never. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it seems what they did with the lighting, like it looks, especially Vice City, looks a lot better now. So maybe I'll get it for like 10 bucks. Well, <laughs> meanwhile, me, me, Mr. Sony fan over here is just like, I just like something, anything. <laughs> Anything. The PS5 Pro came out. Hey, or something. Yeah, the 3DO's back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen. I, I looked at some reviews of the PS5 Pro, and people are like, "It's some like some games. It actually does do stuff. Other games, it doesn't really do much. Like the overall thing is like, it's it's neat, but is it worth the price tag and worth the upgrade? Not mm-hmm. really." Not no. really. Especially like, considering most people don't even use their PS5s to play PS5 games at the moment. Yeah, and it's like they're trying to do like the push to 8K, which is like 8K is Why? not really a th- it's not really yeah. a thing. Most people you don't know. even have 4K TVs at this point. So. Exactly. Like like if we could get every game 1080p 60 first, then maybe we can look at 4K, but we're not yeah. even there. So I don't I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, I, I'm really disappointed in Sony and what they've done with the whole VR support. I, I'm a big VR fan. So, you know, the I, I kind of feel like VR2 is abandoned or Sony's VR endeavors were kind of abandoned. And, and as a VR fan, that kind of hurts a little bit because I was a huge fan of, of the VR2 and I thought it was one of the best headsets in the market. But um, unfortunately, there's just nothing to play on it that I can't get through Meta or steam so can you hook it up to your pc so i i heard that you can hook it up to your pc now via some sort of an adapter and i haven't tried it yet i just i just don't care it just sits and collects dust yeah the vr was never like my thing i've never like really sat down and tried it but there hasn't been enough to make it like worth appealing you know yeah. what i mean like like if i bought a vr set what would i play on it i would play half-life alex Half-Life uh, resident Evil. Resident Evil 4 VR. Absolutely. Beat, Beat Saber, some fucking random golf game, and then maybe Tetris Effect just for the Tetris that's Effect. A fun yes. game. Yeah, that's Absolutely. a lot of fun. Like I love that game. I would play that in VR for sure. Um, there's a lot of good game. Uh until you fall is a really uh really cool game. It's like a roguelike um sword fighting game where you've gotta, you know, get different swords. It's almost like it's a really bad analogy, I guess, but kind of like Hades where you have to go and you get like new weapons every time you die and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a really cool game. Uh, Pistol Whip's really cool. Uh, but they all kind of, not all of them, but they're 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 kind of similar-ish. Uh, but you are wearing a Minnesota Vikings jersey and yes. a wonderful game is NFL Pro Era, which is... Oh, there's a football game on there? Oh my gosh, yeah. And you're, you're the quarterback... And you're reading plays on your on your uh, you know on your uh, wrist and throwing the ball, having the having the uh, the receivers run routes and stuff. It's really cool. Um, cool. And then another one that's a lot of fun that's very exciting is um, uh, one that uh, um, it, it's uh, gosh my brain is going blank right now, but the um, uh, Top Golf put out uh, and it used to be called Pro Putt, but I think it's just top golf now and oh you sit there I, and i work for that company oh really <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh it is one of the coolest games because Kinda. i mean not only can you sit there and, and uh you know do the driving range thing but like you can actually uh do tutorial videos that help you with your swing and stuff and i still i still think it actually has improved my physical golf game uh, and then the boxing games are a lot of fun uh thrill of the fights amazing creed rise to glory is a good one um, th- so there's a lot of cool, cool stuff. What what I like about VR is also it's the games are a lot cheaper because they're a lot shorter, yeah. obviously. But uh, but yeah, Re- Resi Four was was just fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yeah Half Life yeah. Alex is awesome. Yeah, like there's some cool stuff in there. It's just I don't know how much I would play of it, and I don't know if I would get motion sickness from it or not. You yeah, know what I mean? Fair. Which is something I worry about because yeah, yeah, totally so it, fair. A lot it, of people have that. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to get a meta one of these days and try it out. I mean, my PC isn't really strong enough for these kind of games, yeah. so that's that's kind of the issue. But um, e- eventually, I will give I'll give VR a try, and I'll let you know. It's a shame with that NFL game they didn't revive the quarterback club name because that would have been a perfect name for it. That would have been so cool. That's a missed opportunity right there. Yeah, because yeah, it it, fi- it fits the game, and it if does. you're like, and if you're old like us, we we it's like, oh, I remember that series. That series sucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah. But the new kids would be like, yeah, yeah, quarterback club. Yeah. Eh. yeah. 
they're I've tried playing the quarterback club games recently. They don't they're not as good as like say like Madden was back in the nineties or yeah. um even like the Sega Sports NFL games, which were they were finding their footing like the pre two K days. They were mm-hmm. still trying to figure it out, but you know, yeah. But that's back when you know football games were plentiful and full of different. Yeah. Oh, of- phasmophobia! If you want to get scared, that's and that's yeah, coming yeah. to uh, Game Pass soon, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Or has it already released? I'm not sure, but I, I yeah. haven't seen it on Game Pass. No, but yeah, my, my kids one. were all excited. They're like, "Oh, phasmophobia is coming to Xbox!" I'm like, you are not going to play that. <laughs> I, I saw I, well I saw that inscription hit game pass and that's a game that a friend of mine really recommended I just yeah. haven't gotten around to it yet so because because this week is Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D's uh, remakes release I yeah. pre-ordered it I've pre-ordered it the moment it, it arrives it's just all I'm going to be playing so I'm very excited that that's one that I've definitely missed the boat on uh, Dragon Quest is one that I haven't done a lot of playing on well that's that's uh, well, three HD 2D remake would be a good starting point. If I can remember all of that by the end, I'll definitely <laughs> check it out. It's like it's like Kingdom Hearts. It's like 1.5 HD remix. It's like which one? Which one is it? HD well, at, HD at, remix is it well. 1. At 5? least the lore isn't confusing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's Dragon Quest's lore is pretty easy to follow. <laughs> that's that's good because Kingdom Hearts like lost me a long long time ago, <laughs> and I still play the games. I don't care. I act like I know what I'm what I'm doing what i'm who i'm talking to i don't know what i'm doing yeah one of these days i'll sit down and play the entire series i've only ever played one chain of memories and two okay yeah i think three is when i officially hopped on (laughs) i mean by then by then you're already the story's (laughs) such a mess by then anyways it's like yeah why not yeah who at that point nobody cares man Nobody knows. Nobody cares. See, the best starting point is Birth by Sleep because that's technically the start of it. So it's like, ah, perfect. Oh, yeah, is that true. one of the 3DS? Uh, that was the PSP one. It was part. PSP. They put it on like HD Collection Two, I think. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that that game's deep. That game's deep. Um, but yeah, I think we've uh, waffled on enough uh, for this episode. I think it's, <laughs> now it's time to get into our topic for this episode um for this episode we're jo- we're venturing into the world of full motion video and we thought the best place to start was a game that we kind of set into motion because i happened to find this at a, 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 a random game store like a couple of months back and thrack had immediately bought the wii collection at the same time and then of course i got this today so we're just <laughs> all sorts of fun going on here but we're talking about the Mad Dog McCree uh, series of games by American Laser Games for this episode. American Laser Games. What a fucking company name. I love it. It's <laughs> it's so industrial, right? You know, like it sounds like, like a factory where they work with like lasers and shit, you know? <laughs> they were also located in like the greatest place ever, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. The, best, the greatest Weird Al song. Yeah. <laughs> um, And I believe they filmed most of the scenes in new mexico which perfectly makes sense for uh, this kind of game i mean that's probably where they got the idea for the game you know honestly because my guess is i wouldn't know i've never been to that part of the country but i imagine the old west iconography lives in like new mexico and arizona and you know nevada you know those kind of deserty places you know there's a lot of probably a lot of remnants of the old west yeah absolutely i mean i grew up thinking that the game was filmed in uh at old Tucson where uh, I'm from. So uh, we've got a lot of that, you know, especially in Arizona, there's, I mean, we've got tombstone, we've got old Tucson. We've got a lot of callback to that, uh, that old West. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what I grew up thinking, but yes, it, the, the game was mostly filmed in, in New Mexico. Um, American laser games from what I read so far, uh, is actually uh, started out as a uh, uh, police training company. They were building interactives to uh, to train the police on on how to uh, engage uh, uh, shooting situations. And then the uh, the person who owned it, Thra- Th- uh, Bill, you probably probably know it. Thrack, maybe you know the name of the person. I, I can't remember, but uh, decided, hey, this could be used for entertainment, not just not just uh, uh, training purposes. So um, that's kind of where American Laser Games was was born at least that that's the story i read so so the company was founded by uh robert uh grebe 
I believe his name was. Or Grabe. Or Grabe. I don't know. Um, you never know. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting with American Laser Games to me because they always seem to get overshadowed by, like, their probably closest contemporary was probably Digital Pictures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Digital Pictures to me, like, I always found their their games to be, like, so bad they're great. Like... I feel like digital pictures takes themselves a little too seriously. You that know what was I mean? My, like my thoughts with them, like because like American Laser Games, they clearly know that they're being cheesy as fuck, and they're just going with it, and that's kind of <laughs> yeah, how, yeah. How I viewed it was like digital pictures is like like those famous B movies that you find that like when you watch it, you're like, oh no, they took this seriously. It's just funny in hindsight. It's like the right? room. It's like he totally yeah. intended that to be serious. Yeah, <laughs> but this like the tongue is firmly in cheek. They know exactly what they're doing. And I think that makes it even more kind of enjoyable. You know, because I guess before they were American laser games, they were called ICAT, the Institute for Combat Arms and Tactics. And yeah, I, I could imagine them using the similar technology for Mad Dog McCree that they had for like the police training simulators, mm. where they would probably like film like a combat scenario or whatever, and then have like a light gun for them to like, you know, do the practicing on. And then yeah, somebody was and then they're probably like, This is just like an arcade game. And someone went, yeah. Wait, we could we could do that, you know? So and that was sort of the birth of Mad Dog McCree. Apparently the game had a budget of one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. I don't know why we know that, but apparently we do. Um, And yeah, like filming around the desert of their studio makes a lot of sense for them to do like an Old West type of game. You know, like there was quite a bit of Old West in the early 90s, you know, like Sunset Riders was big in the arcades at the time, I assume. So it, it would make sense to do something in this way. Um, I've never seen one of the arcade machines in person, but I've I've looked at like photos of them. And they're huge. They were like huge. the monitors are like like fifty plus inches or whatever. And that was yes. like the old tube TVs, you know. And they would have the 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 gun and all that. And those, and those look really fucking cool and probably really hard to maintain. Like I guarantee you, there's at least one or two of them out in the world that some dude has in his garage that he like takes care of on a daily basis because he's like, this is my childhood, man. Like I need to preserve this for the world. So, so we have a restaurant out here called uh, Pinnacle Peak, and it's a you know steakhouse with the cowboy theme. They have a whole town around it, really cool place. Um, but they had one of those cabinets for the longest time. And when we started talking about this episode, I ran over there to see if I could get some some film of it, and it was gone. Oh. So I, I don't know if my memory was like, well, you haven't been to the steakhouse in like five six years, maybe you know, maybe uh, it, it went away in some some time in there, but. Uh, they have like an old timey arcade in there that has like a full shooting gallery as well. So they've got the whole thing where you, you know, you shoot the, the piano player and he starts playing the, the tune and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, for the longest time they had a, a, a Mad Dog McCree cabinet there. Uh, but also our old West um, uh, it, it was a studio uh, old Tucson studios where a lot of these, these uh, Westerns are filmed uh, also had, the full size cabinet there. And that's kind of where I saw it for the first time uh, way back in the nineties and uh, thought it was the coolest thing. Uh, in fact, I, I think the original, the original push for that was to get a Sega CD um, because I know it also launched on that. So I, I had it for Sega CD as well as 3DO, but uh, those, those arcades were, were just the coolest thing. Cause you had to actually holster the gun and, and do the quick draw stuff. And it was so much fun. And they were also like a dollar to play, which was like astronomical back then for for uh, <laughs> quarter machines. You're either throwing a quarter in regular Pac-Man or some of those lower games and like 50 cents for like the Street Fighters and Mortal Kombat's. This was like a full on dollar, man. It was so much money, but um, it was such it was such a cool thing to see. They're trying to get their money back, I guess, because it yeah. must have been like a big because I mean, it, it's I wouldn't say the production value is super high. But you could tell that they did put some money into it, you know, like like building like a like a set, like a Western set. I don't know if they actually built it or not, but, it, you know, like getting that old timey thing and then like having to grab all the 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 actors from the local like community theater, because yeah. that's what it feels like. They just went to the like the improv or like, you know, low budget acting. Be like, hey, you guys want to do this? Like, come over here, you know, well, so like the- le- le- leave your SAG card at home. You'll be fine. The guy who played Mad Dog, I, I believe, was just like a ranch owner 
out. In yeah, the just location. some dude. <laughs> you have some dude. Right? And then the, the lady who hands you the keys in the bar is his wife. Yeah. I guess. And I, I, oh, yeah. You know. When you go into the saloon and that lady yeah. walks by. Yeah. Yeah. Because the bartender hands you the keys. I mean, it's it's like, you know, some of the other games that, that uh, we previously discussed where they're just like, hey, roommate, come over here, do some karate. <laughs> like, it's... And, and funnily enough, you mentioned that because uh, American Laser Games is connected to Way of the Warrior, apparently. One of the best games 3DO the... ever put. <laughs> no, no. The, this game is much better. Though, I, I, I will say, I will say, I, I did not play the 3DO version of this. Um, I watched some gameplay of it and like 10 seconds of this on 3DO was enough for me to go fuck this because the idea of playing any light gun rail shooter with a D-pad no thank you uh, I'm, I'm good I'm alright like somehow T2 the arcade game was able to get away with it but like yeah. this so, no thank you so I, so I played it on my Wii with a Wii remote and that was a much much smoother experience i will say i played this for about an hour and i immediately went to my ps3 and downloaded the, the collection on ps3 you played that for an hour yeah i was well, de I, dedicated why well, I, I need to ask does the d-pad have like a sensitivity slider or setting I, if there is one i didn't find it so. how slow is it uh, it's about what you what it looks like on the screen it's it's very oh, much right. like you're it's the reason why we didn't like Starblade very much. It was like, uh, this is not designed for this. Like, yeah, I yeah. mean, even holding the C button while you're moving the the control pad around was just not. It's not fast enough, unless you have every location memorized. I was actually tempted to buy the light gun just for this, but then I realized it won't work on my TV anyway. So I was like, eh. <laughs> yeah, I had the light gun. Good. I I was I was that kid. I had to have the light gun. See, I would have had the light gun for this at the time, but yeah, like modern TVs just don't want to work with those kind of guns, so it's yeah. kind of pointless. And that's kind of the issue with playing these type of games, you know, because, I mean, just about all these games have PC ports, you know, so you can play them on, you know, with a mouse, mm -hmm. which makes them, like, the easiest game ever, but, you know. Yeah. But to be fair, you're not necessarily here for the gameplay, you know, because the gameplay is... It's your I typical mean, it's a, rail shooter. Yeah, yeah. it... it, it I think it tries to be a little different by not having every scene sequenced perfectly, hmm. you know, because I was used to say in other ones where you would just be like, oh, the guy comes here and then here and then down there. And 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 they do it occasionally. They'll have like set pieces, but then there'll be other ones where it's like, oh, there's like six or seven different people and they all show up kind of randomly and you have to try your best to memorize it, which allows for some variety. But I, I think the game's like, at least on the Wii version, I found the hit detection to be incredibly inconsistent. That's one thing they actually fixed on the PS3 version. They fixed the hitboxes a bit. Hmm. Yeah, because the hitboxes are kind of strange. And, like, the timing is weird as well. You know, like, how much time they yeah. give you to shoot. Like, most of the time, they give you two shots. Like, if you don't hit them in two shots, then you're you're dead, basically. Yeah, like but, the... um. The Wii version, I think, infamously had some um, some hitbox jank because I actually won when I was when I was doing my uh, research to the for this game, I I came across the Game Grumps playthrough and oh boy, that Aaron is that is that is an amazing playthrough. That's how I discovered there there was Wii versions of these because mm -hmm. I knew about Mad Dog McCree. First time I learned about him was I think it's from Spoonie mm -hmm. back when he started talking about like FMV PC games. And I think it was, he eventually like reviewed, I think it was Johnny Mnemonic, the FMV PC game, but he has like a whole like 20 minute episode leading up to it where he talks about like all this stuff. And he brought up American laser games, you know, and he's like, Oh, you, you play these for, to laugh at the cornball acting, which he's incredibly correct on. Like oh, yeah. they're fucking amazing, which we'll get to, but yeah, like the hitboxing is kind of weird. Um, it also and... reloading is very weird. I mean, it, it it's like any other like like on game. You just shoot off screen, you know. Like if you just treat treat the Wii remote as just like a just like a gun, it's like you just shoot off screen or whatever, and then like A or B is shoot, which is nice. You kind of get the two options. Um, but you know, I I beat it. I beat all three of these games on the Wii. They're they're beatable because mm -hmm. playing them on there, it's essentially playing them in free play mode. You know, where you get your three lives, and then if you die, that's game over. But you can, like, continue 
basically like immediately. And with Mad Dog One, you have to do the showdown. It's showdown time. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to do that before you can progress. Um, and, and you get good at it. You kind of have to, you know, because um, yeah, the the quick draw stuff was the stuff I struggled with the mm-hmm. most by a wide, wide margin. But thankfully, on the Wii version, it's very forgiving in terms of like saving your progress, you know, and just letting you just do it until you eventually get it right anyways so you can breeze through all these games in roughly like half an hour a piece yeah they're so. not super long at all but, yeah. I, but they're arcade games yeah they were meant to gobble quarters not to be longevity yeah, games because because i was thinking about that when i was playing mad dog one i was like man imagine putting in a dollar every time i died i would be so fucking pissed <laughs> off especially in the 90s <laughs> yeah <laughs> seriously the, I couldn't. The, I couldn't imagine. That might have been the value proposition to the parents. Was like, hey, if we buy this, it's going to be way cheaper than dumping a dollar in each each time. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think I, I we got it on like deep discount when again when 3DO was going out of business, and it was like fifteen dollars for for that uh, Mad Dog Two with the uh, with the rest of the collection. Nice. That's the way to go. Um. So, gameplay wise pretty standard the we mentioned before the real reason you play these games is everything else like yes and oh my god i i love it so much (laughs) i love it so much it's so good it's it's like it's it's like stupid but like in that amazing way we are like i love this like yeah well to to quote game grumps it's very much like the minnesota fun time players you know what i mean like it's it's that kind of jaunty kind of corny like they know it's silly kind of a thing, but that's what you're there for, you know? Like like when people die, they stick their tongue out and go, ah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or, or my favorite you know? my favorite is during the tutorial, but you missed one. Try another. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like it's like the old prospector, you know. But like, oh stranger, you gotta you gotta you gotta take out Mad Dog. He's ruining the town, you know. I, All this I crazy will say, stuff. And it's so the, good. The game Grumps playthrough completely ruined the Undertaker for me, though, because anytime he pops up on screen, <laughs> mm, yeah, he shot you. Yeah, he just completely like messes with it. <laughs> like, I love that. That was like, like I think that was like one of the first games that I experienced where when you die, you get taunted. Uh, yes, you know, and I loved it. Like I don't know why it was just something so different. Like they were just reminding you how bad you are at this game. I mean, he tries to be kind of nice. You know what I mean? Where he's just like, he's like, oh, I think you're going to pull through. Yeah. Like, oh, you got one true. life left, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I couldn't imagine like playing this game on an arcade and seeing like that. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it's the whole like, if I could find the arcade version of this, I, I, I would have to like, you know, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm a little sick, uh, but I would like to, you know, I would put a lot of, a lot of quarters into it just to kind of get that experience, you know? I'm going to, um, I'll run down to Tombstone one of these days and see, because in the old town, they've got, you know, all the old bars and everything still. And I, I would be, I'd be disappointed if I didn't find one of these down there. Yeah, that would be amazing. So, so another uh, put that in the discord if I, if it happens. So good, nice. uh, good plug for your discord. <laughs> I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. Another great one for me is like when um you go into town and the sheriff's there and he's like, he's like, Mr. Mr. Mad Dog McCree, we don't need your kind here. And then he gets, it's like, hey, Sheriff. And he gets shot and he's like, okay, maybe I spoke wrong. <laughs> he has, he <laughs> and it's like, oh, geez. <laughs> it's like, it's a campy, you know, spaghetti Western. It's, it's so funny because those are so like, I don't know, as, as in Arizona, maybe this is, you know, a generalization, but like, you know, we love that stuff. I mean, I, I love that stuff. I grew up on, on the old Westerns, you know, from John Wayne to, to tombstone you know and uh, yeah so this kind of resonated with that plus I mean, also it, thinking that it was in in film here like i always just grew up with that notion um you know it made it like oh this is something that's made in my hometown and it wasn't but that's okay it's close enough i think close right? enough four hour yeah. drive it's fine yeah but like it, yeah like it doesn't compare really to like the hollywood western films especially at that time when they were trying to be like more serious and, oh yeah like, violent and all that stuff like this is just 
as like silly kids entertainment as it gets. Yeah, I love you know? how there's but, like no blood, but you're still like mowing down like hundreds of shooting people. people. Yeah, you're just mass murdering people at certain <laughs> spots, you know. And it's but there's there's so no blood, good. so it's like not violent at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and there are so many times where like the actor looks at the cameraman and not the camera. One like of my it's so obvious, your, uh... and there's a couple times where you can see the shadow of the cameraman on the ground. You know, it's like you're like walking towards something. If you look, like his, you just see the camera guy just there. Yeah. Like there are these little sort of like miss ups, but it it adds to the charm of it. Like it doesn't take away from it at all. Yeah. Like you one of my I mean? favorites is uh, you're up on this like mountain, and uh, you this one guy jumps into screen and you shoot him, and rather than like falling down, he just jumps away, and it's like oh, okay. uh, the, the uh. stunt. I'm like impressed with the stunt work oh, in yeah. these games. Like in the first, like Mad Dog, when you shoot the guy on the roof and then he rolls off the roof and smacks the ground, and I'm like, ooh, that did not look fun. Yeah, and and, and I know that guy didn't get paid a lot to do that, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Or when you're in the bar and like you're just like shooting all the people up on the railing, the one guy just collapses through and it cuts to like slow mo, and he's like, no, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're yeah. like they all have their own kind of thing. Like Mad Dog One feels. Like it doesn't do as much of like that crazy stunt work. It kind of accelerates as the series goes on and the production values get a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, Mad it, Dog Two has like one of the best like ridiculous scenes ever, where the prospector's sitting on top of the TNT barrel, and he's like, "Shoot the fuse, Mad Dog! Shoot the fuse!" Oh, yeah. and, and of course, you want to see what happens if you don't shoot the fuse. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, it's so good. Yeah, and, and I was so bad really... at shooting the fuse. I I saw plenty of times. <laughs> the best part is if you look really close the second it explodes he changes into a dummy and it's like oh there he goes oh uh, yeah it's it's like that like one frame cut you know that if you're paying attention you see the cut but you know i think most people wouldn't wouldn't notice it there's also a scene where like a guy comes out of an outhouse and then you shoot him oh you shoot him he goes back oh, yeah. in he blows up it blows and then up. you see him and he's just like that was a big one <laughs> <laughs> Like, bitch, you just tried to shoot me. What are you doing? <laughs> I just the, love like, how he goes back in and it just explodes. That's in, that's in like, Last what? Bounty. Is that in Mad Dog Tour? I think it's in Last Bounty Hunter. Because oh, Last Bounty Hunter is the fucking silliest one of the three. Oh, yeah. like, I love Oh, Last my Bounty God. Hunter. It is so funny. Oh, my God. I was laughing the entire time. It was so I, good. Whenever you shoot a civilian, it cuts to the... You shot the an of, innocent. Yeah. You shot an innocent. And it's like just oh, well, there was that one girl who's like, I just may start bawling. Yeah. <laughs> or the the Asian one who's like, bad ruck. <laughs> I think I sent you that one in a DM. Yeah, I'm like, man. are you fucking kidding me? I was like, yep. Mm -hmm. Like, or, yeah, um... I, I yeah, I sent Bill some some quotes from this game. Oh okay. uh, from that. Yeah, there was um da -da 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 -da. oh yeah, yeah, where she says, You shot an innocent, bad ruck. And then, um, oh, there was the one where it's um, when you're getting, I think it's Nasty Dan, and you're like shooting through the camp, and, and you cut to the cook, and he's just like, like I didn't think the possum was that bad. <laughs> I love I, think I, I never I, shot him. A part of me wanted to shoot him to see what would that, happen, but I was like, that, I like him too much to shoot him. That's so, oh. just because in the game Grumps played through, this happened to Aaron multiple times. But um, He the shoots scene, the sheriff because he yeah, leads with the he gun. he has a gun, and it's like, the, the game literally if it wasn't you. for the game if it wasn't for the game grumps playthrough i would have done the same i knew not to do it i did it anyways because he he had a gun i'm like it's literally like programmed yeah. in your head if they have a gun and, you shoot. and again that's another guy who when you first see him he's looking at the cameraman and not the camera and it's like dude look at the fucking camera you know <laughs> like like you can tell it's very ragtag you know when mm -hmm. them them making these games you know what i mean like digital pictures doesn't have any of those weird quirks to them but like it doesn't reflect you know what i mean like here it's like you have these little follies and all that and it's great i love when you get to dirty uh dirty dan too and he's like i may like, be captured but i could still be very very nasty <laughs> i love too where he's like i bet you can't shoot this cigarette out of my hand and you just shoot it out of his hand and he's just like oh and he runs away Shit. yeah yeah that's so funny and then his whole um, camp just explodes. And yeah. Everything blows up in the last bounty hunter. It's oh, yeah. And there was one. I forget which one. It, it might have been Cactus Kid when you like are shooting through the jail. And then like some dude comes out of it. And he's just like, jailbreak. Time for me to go. <laughs> that one's good. <laughs> that made I me laugh the, um, every time. I forget his name. The one that's like handsome 
something. Handsome Harry. Handsome Harry. I shot him when I felt like because he pulled the cane and I was like, oh, is that a cane shotgun? But I don't think it is. But I shot him anyways. I love um the girls are all playing uh, poker with the guy. And he's like, I think dealer rigged the table. And he pulls out the gun. And you shoot him. And then the game kind of stutters for a minute. And then he falls down. And then the girls like stand there for three seconds. And then they go. Ah! like right <laughs> after. Yeah. And, and then in that part, like, like some lady just says like, here, use this shotgun. Cause like, there's the three guys up there. I mean, you shoot them. It, it, like again, like is... the timing of like when they set the enemies up to shoot is so random. Because, yeah, it'll be like you can tell it's like mid frame. They stop and it's like, like, say the guy's like this close to the edge of the screen and they stop. And it's like, that's not a good time to stop to shoot. And other times they give you way too much time. You know, like, again, it's all very like flying by the seat of your pants. I think another great one, too, is like once you finally finish a uh, handsome Harry's uh, thing, you shoot the guy and he falls over the craps table or the, the poker table. And then the, the barmaid walks by. She's like, ah, we were going to read. Re, uh, Renovate You're gonna remo- <laughs> yeah, renovate it. Anyway. <laughs> God, it's so stupid, but it's so funny. It's um, so good. Who was the other? Oh, El Loco was the other one. Yeah, El Loco. Yeah, but uh, uh, the one I but uh, but then Mad Dog Two, like is Mad Dog One. It's like you have the four areas that you can go to, and you kind of play them like in whatever order you want, really. Mm-hmm. But Mad Dog Two tries to do something a little interesting, and you have the three different guides. Mm-hmm. Buckskin Bonnie, the professor, and my favorite name ever, Shooting Beaver. Shooting Beaver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to quote Game Grumps, I wish that was the girl's name. <laughs> but um, but what's interesting about those is that like only one of them is like the right, like the good ending. Like the other two, if you do the other two, they you, like you'll do the whole rigmarole, get to the chest, and it won't have anything. And the game will be like, oh, you didn't do the right thing. But it's uh, but the spoilers, Buckskin Bonnie is like the good ending, you know, which is which is funny because I think most people chose her anyways, which I, I understand why. But um, <laughs> yeah, <I understand. laughs> yeah, but like but like shooting beaver like that one is fun, you know, when it's like, oh, it's weird. I'm killing all these natives like I find it weird that it's like like you, if you choose the Native American guide, then it's like, oh, shoot a bunch of his like. Relatives, I, think they, I guess. I think, I think they made up. They made fun of that on the Game Grumps episode. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I'm just no, like that nothing is, about that it. Very... Aged well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a... Unfortunately, no, most of these well. most of these games have not aged well. But... Yeah, <laughs> it, and uh, yeah. Well, and then the Game Grumps one is uh, when you do the professor, and that one guy's like, "You're a cheat and a swindler." Like that's the... good and. I love the scene though during like uh, Buckshot Bonnie where you like blow up this thing and the guy walks out and he's like, "Got a light." Got a light. Like 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 the dude's holding Buckskin Bonnie, then you shoot him and he goes, "Nah," you know. And <laughs> yeah. then she grabs the dynamite. She's like, "I got a short fuse too, stranger," and then throws yeah, it and blows right. up. And then he really and then cool they have the guy and music, the, yeah. the "Got a light." Like it's fucking Wiley e. Coyote, you know. Yeah, like, <laughs> he just so, collapses down. And I'm like, I, I'm I, still I trying to figure story. out how the how the guy with the arrow in his neck was still talking. I, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> this how is that the map to out. the gold. The Padre has the other half, and he's just like riddled with arrows. Like, yeah. it's way too much. Like, he would not be alive. Oh my gosh, it's so good, but it's so funny. It's like to me, like it's crazy because um, these games are all um, like digital pictures. Like, you laugh because they're bad, but then these ones are like. You just get a chuckle because they are so extreme uh, to the max. Yeah, and that's just what's so entertaining about them, you know? Like, you, you can tell they went in being like, be like, we're having fun with this. Like, we don't need to, it, it doesn't have to be that serious, you know? Like, it's kind of more memorable, Yeah, you know what I mean? Because it's, it is like low budget, you know, like just random actors and people, mm. rinky dink sets, like, the outfits aren't great, you know, like a lot of a lot of people just saying, like, are you looking at my key stranger? Mad dog, you don't stand a chance. Like that kind of acting. <laughs> I, but, like, I love the guy with like the uh, the English accent who's clearly not English at all. Well, the professor. He's robbing maybe, the train. Maybe yeah, that guy. I mean, that was cool. They like got a train like like an old timey yeah. train like that was cool. Yeah. I kind of hated that sequence, you know, because you shoot all the people and it doesn't feel right. But then you get to like the the fifty cal gun, 
And beforehand, the game teaches you like, oh, shoot the ammo box, not the dude. But that's the one time you have to actually shoot the dude. And it annoyed the shit out of me because I kept dying. Yep. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh. oh, it's a good game. Good game. Yeah, the, the, they're, all, are, they're all fun. Uh, like, are, like, um, like, I wouldn't rate any of them higher than like, like a six and a half, really. And that's being kind of generous because, yeah, like the gameplay isn't great. Like, I was frustrated quite a bit of the time playing it with like all the quick draw stuff and, mm-hmm. and the way that like none of that really feels good and the inconsistent hitboxes and all that stuff. Like, playing these games is kind of frustrating, you know. Like, there was a lot of times I shouted fucking bullshit at the screen. <laughs> I won't lie. I won't lie. But but you hang with it because it's like it's so like silly mm-hmm. and it's just so it's entertaining. So oh, the, you, you, you deal with it. You know the what amount I mean? Of times it, I, I, <laughs> like I don't always play games for the story, but I pl- I stuck around for the story of Mad Dog McCree. Yeah. And, and basically like the amount of it didn't matter how frustrated I was. The amount of times I got to hear that chef scream, I didn't think the beaver was that bad. <laughs> I didn't know possum was that bad. Yeah, oh, possum. <laughs> yeah, possum. Just the sheer, like, jovial Got a light. Na- <laughs> uh, the so sheer, funny. just, like, jovial nature of every single person in this game. Like, you can tell everyone at least had fun. Oh, I imagine the production of these was like a rootin' tootin' time. Like it, it looks like they were just having fun. Like they yeah. knew what they were doing. They're like, yeah, let's let's just hang out. Like we'll just hang out in the desert for a couple days and just shoot shoot some silly shit and be done with it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's interesting how like the FMV is set up because it feels like it's all like like one continuous video, but then like your actions will cut it kind of differently. You know? Like, mm-hmm. It's like you can see the cuts. You know what I mean? But, like, it has a surprising amount of consistency to it as far as, like, all the different sections and, like, you know, how the editing and everything lining up is, like, surprisingly uh... decent. But, yeah, but it'll have, like, bullshit bits, like, in Mad Dog 2 when it cuts to, like, the um, like the with the priest or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, sometimes they'll have the gun and shoot you it's and other a, yeah. times they'll have the little parchment. And it's, like, that is total bullshit. Like, that is absolute bullshit. But... You have to remember these were arcade games, and arcade games notoriously are full of quarter eating bullshit. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this game is it, it's just it's really blatant, especially when you're playing it in a non arcade setting. Yeah. But you know, you deal with it. I love that, like some of the logic too. Like you can tell, like this would only make sense in a shooter, like arcade shooter. But like when you're up on the hill and the guy like comes out of hiding, he's like, "Don't shoot! Don't shoot!" And it's like, <laughs> "Why did you don't shoot? I just like to go through windows." Yeah, just like goofy stuff like that like yeah or or like like random like women would show up you know yeah oh yeah that was that was a good woman you shot and they're hard to find i always think of like the scene with like you're in the bar and you're up on that balcony and then the lady in the white dress runs by and of course you're so quick to shoot that you're like oops (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but but like, you shoot the guy in the red jammies, and then yeah, he kicks the convenient gate open and does the flip. Yeah, and it just goes so like, good. It, it goes Matrix time, and he just goes no. <laughs> yeah, like love- as they yeah, like the stunts get progressively crazier as they go. Like dudes just like jumping off of buildings and like all this other crazy shit. Like <laughs> like they roll, they do the cartwheels down the stairs and fly yeah. over, and it's just like like guys, you are. I know you're not getting paid enough to do this shit, you know. And there ain't no crash pads. Come That's on, these are the nineties. You're lucky to get like a, like a, like an elementary school gym mat on there. You know, <laughs> last, they wore last bounty football hunter. pads or something. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> last bounty hunter had by far the mo- all the explosions though that were so unnecessary, but I loved every single. Oh, one there. Of them. Yeah, so many explosions. Like it might have been last bounty hunter where it was either the, no, I think it was Mad Dog Two where it's like. There's like that one dude who's sitting in like the little like weave basket. And then there's like the woman who comes out going, uncle, uncle. And then like there's a guy right behind her with like a gun and a dynamite. And you shoot him and then he falls back in. and (laughs) They're flexing that budget. I didn't even shoot the dynamite. (laughs) You blow up. It's like the it's like the outhouse. It's just you're like, why? But it's funny. (laughs) Why not? Why not? I love how when the when the outhouse explodes. And none of the explosions are. 
and like none of the explosions are impressive. Like not a single no, one. They're, they're all they're, they're all very lame explosions. <laughs> that's like at best they like found some fireworks and we're like this will work, yeah. you know. <laughs> but it again it fits with the low budget fun atmosphere, you know. Oh, you know those guys were excited as heck the day that they were going to film the explosion scene. Oh, yeah. Everybody was excited for and they brought their families on the set. And like, <laughs> like, we're going to blow up an outhouse. And it was probably the coolest thing that we did. <laughs> Shit, we got to order extra catering. We're blowing up the outhouse today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some more Taco Bell, guys. I will say, like, one of my favorite things, too, is, like, it, we were talking about how, like, the way it kind of transitions from scene to scene is really cool at times. Like it, yeah. it would be interesting in like certain levels, it would have kind of a standard stock, um, like a rail shooter thing where like it would just kind of like you'd be on a still screen and they just pop up randomly. But then like yeah. other levels, like like the uh, the possum scene, you're like going through the camp and the camera pans with you and it's just yeah, like, the camera's like it's moving like it's like it's a fucking John Woo movie, you know? Yeah, like it's, it's just like it's, one single shot. It's like on a dolly. It's just a, it's a really cool effect. It's I, not a dolly. It's no, a dude I, running. It was, <laughs> yeah, but it, it was smooth enough that it like looked pretty good. Well, was, they probably had like a steady cam because you can make mm -hmm. like you can get like steady cam attachments to your body to where you can move and it won't move with you, you know. Mm -hmm. So. I love the fact too that you can tell like those were all like fake guns because like the amount of times they flash each other in the face, I'm just like, oh, and I'm like, this is. <laughs> oh I'm yeah, like, yeah. They're definitely like, yeah, like prop guns for mm -hmm. like, like I don't know, like Briscoe County or something. I, you know? I wouldn't even be shocked if they were just like cap guns they got at the party store. <laughs> Probably. Well, not. they don't have like the orange tips or anything like that, so like they you look slight. Off. Yeah, they look true. slightly authentic, like just I mean, authentic enough to where if you're not like a weird gun nut, they'll pass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know what? One of the things I thought was really cool about the game that. I don't know if it gets enough credit, but it almost was like real time loading. So even even during the quick time sequences, when you would hit somebody, there'd be a slight pause. But it was like a time before loading screens be became like everything. It was everything was a loading screen, and I didn't get that kind of magic again until things like Resident Evil, where like sequences were still happening, but it was very clearly the loading screen. So. I don't know. That that was one thing that I thought was was always really cool about that game. Even though you'd see the pauses and the the game would stutter while it was loading the next sequence, I always thought yeah. that was cool. It it must be smoother in the arcade. I don't know because it like, was way smoother in the arcade because it's on Laserdisc. And even though Laserdisc yeah. is like a giant CD, well, a lot of people don't know it's an analog format. Like it's not mm -hmm. digital at all. So it has to be much smoother compared to say like on a CD or like a like a Wii DVD or Wii disc or whatever, where it will stutter a little bit, you know. Yeah. That's so that's why I'm really interested in trying out the laser disc version because I, I think that one is the most true to the to the arcade. I mean, I think the PS3 version made it better because it upscaled and you, you get a full 720p, but yeah. Uh, oh, Mad Dog McCree released on the 3DS. That's did. true too. It and it was really touch screen. I feel like that would make it way too easy. You just it's way easy. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's one of the strangest ports ever because they didn't even add any 3D. They just kind of like here it's on 3DS. Have fun. Use the touch screen. And uh, I was, oh, oh man, I even like fake ass 3D. That would have been no, cool. They didn't add no. anything. Yeah. 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 Three. Um. iOS got a, a release back in 2011 or 2012, I think, too. Oh, no Android port. Shit. I know. And I can't find it now because when I read that, I was looking for it. I was like, this is be probably great. been delisted. A lot yeah. of iOS, especially games, have been mm -hmm. like delisted over the years. Like you remember around this time, the early 2010s, where game companies were like, like shit, phones are the future. We're just going to put our console games on mobile. That'll work, right? And, <laughs> you know, oh. obviously it didn't. And then a lot of them have been delisted now because it's like, who the fuck? Like why? Like the idea of playing GTA Three on my phone sounds cool, but then you play it and you're like, I don't like this. this but hey, work. if you want to play that GTA Three port, you can just buy it on PlayStation Network because that's the version they put on PSN. Uh, yeah, at, that, at, at that point, just get the the trilogy because at least it's a, a new version of it. Yeah. So or just emulate the PS2 version. We were talking about the uh, the load times and like how it would load stuff. One thing I found very interesting, I was curious, so I, I pulled out my um, my FC one out of retirement, and I just gave it, I gave it a shot. I was like, I'm curious how this will run on FC one. So you know how the FC one has the, the power light and then the read light. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 
the well, the FC we, ten does as well. Yeah, on the uh, the FC one though, it's like massive, and it, it like the way it works is it like blinks whenever the system reads. Um, so when I was going through playing yeah, this the game, FC ten, it says ready and then access. Yeah, that, that's uh, what the the one has as well. It's just on the one, it's so it's so big and like in your face that you kind of can't, can't. It was a it. solid green light, wasn't it? Solid green and then solid pink, like watermelon colors. Pink. Um, yeah. But um, <laughs> when um, so when I was playing this on the FC one, that thing was like struggling, and I was like, all right, I'm, I can only do like one level because I, I'm worried I'm gonna kill this thing. But, <laughs> the read light was like shining the entire time. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this is one of those games. <laughs> Just constantly, constantly working. Yeah. Like it, it's a shame that it feels like the 3DO and probably by extension, the Sega CD version are like the worst it, it is on the CDI as well. <laughs> oh, CDI God. version is actually pretty good <laughs> from what, what I've read. I haven't tried it yet, but I've, it, I've heard that one's the closest to the laser disc version. It, it's it, it's not so much the quality of the film; it's just more of like the act of playing the game is probably like, again, not the most fun. I mean, I know the CDI has that weird, like DVD remote controller, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that's like better or not. Like, apparently, this has a DVD release in the early two thousands, and I don't, and I don't know if that's like, I don't know how you play a DVD game. Um, no idea. Um, <laughs> like, like yeah, it has a lot of weird ports, but yeah, again, it's I feel like playing those games without say the light gun or a Wii remote or a PlayStation move or a mouse or something mm -hmm. would just be like, not really the way to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Dem demolition man played better than uh, the D pad controls on 3DO did. Yeah. I mean that game you could, well, that was made with the 3DO in mind, you know, and that has at least enough variety that like, it's a little different and yeah, like the shoot 'em up stages in that, like, you know, that's just more of like a gallery shooter. Than like a like a light gun like like it doesn't require a super fast reaction time. Yes. Like this game really wants like those cat like reflexes of points, you know. Well, I feel Demolition Man had a quicker cursor too, like the it did. Yeah, uh, it didn't feel terrible to control. Better. Yeah, they, they were also very lenient with you in Demolition Man. Like this game is not lenient at all. With the, one hit, you're dead. One hit, dead. <laughs> one <laughs> fucking hit. That's my at least Demolition line. Man gives you a life bar. Yeah, my favorite line from. from Dan in the game grubs playthrough. Aaron's like one hit, really. He's like, yes, Aaron. That's what a gun does. That's how bullets work. <laughs> yeah, forty-five long Colt. That's a that's a bad round right there. Uh, I mean, so, I imagine if you get shot with a like a revolver from that era, one hits enough to to bring you down. Yeah, most likely. I mean, I don't want to be shot with the taser, much less. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. So, um. Going into reception, it is very all over the place. Um, yeah, don't say. <laughs> oh boy, because um, you know, like those weird, fucking pretentious ass game reviewers were gonna give this game shit for being stupid. Uh, the CGR. I watched the CGR um, undertow review before we uh, recorded this. I was like, I was like, wow, guys, you were very harsh. Like, I get it, but ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Again, it's like, it's it, it's just like I don't know how game reviewers look at this game and then treat it like a serious product. You know what I mean? Like, like if you have issues with the gameplay, that's fair. I have those issues as well, but like, you can't tell me you're like watching this and not being like, this is so fucking stupid, but this is kind of cool. Like it's like, it's not meant to be taken seriously at all. You know, like, like people giving say like night trap or corpse killer shit for that. Like I totally get it. But here it's like, I, I don't at all. No, this is the gameplay is so, harmless in like every way and honestly you're just watching a comedy <laughs> like that's mm -hmm. like the real appeal of these games oh yeah absolutely so i'm not going to go over every review score but i would like to share uh some of the game rankings where the pc version got a wonderful 32 percent the 3do version got a 55 uh the dvd port <laughs> they actually rated that um got a 34 <laughs> um the wii got a 35 the 3ds got a 27 and the PS3 version actually got a 60, which I'm amazed by. Um, there's one that's, review. It's that Sony bias, man. It's the nostalgia. <laughs> so Electronic Games gave the DOS version 92. So I, I, that's Ooh. interesting. Hell yeah. Um, there's one review for the arcade version, which was from Sinclair User. They gave it an 85. 
Um, oh, CDI Magazine gave the CDI version in '87. CDI Magazine. Yeah. The fact that they so I thought I I laughed at 3DO Magazine. The fact that there's a CDI Magazine that's just funny to me. That's crazy. I want that. I want those back issues. <laughs> yeah. probably, hopefully, it's in the Internet Archive. Uh, I'll have to see the, the hotel. What is it? Hotel Mario or Hotel Link or whatever. It, the... Yeah, Hotel Mario, and then the the unholy Triforce. Yeah, oh, yeah. Zelda's Zelda Adventure: Witches. The Wand of Gamelon and the Faces of Evil. Yep. And the then title on it says, "We got away with it, guys." <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you want to play those Zelda games, but like a good version of them with tongue firmly in cheek, I recommend uh, Arzette, the Jewel of Faramore. Okay. Like it's literally, they took the 2D CDI Zelda games, like copied the same like format, but actually made a good game out of it. Oh. And it retains all the weird production quips and humor and all that. It is genuinely an amazing game. I played it earlier this year. Highly recommend. <laughs> no, well, it's not like ripping from Nintendo at all directly. No, I know. No, I mean, and uh, and Nintendo's never going to acknowledge those games. They yeah. refuse. Like, oh. <laughs> like imagine, like it would, it would. Yeah, I could do the funniest thing, and that's buy enough Nintendo stock to get into a shareholders meeting, and then ask them, "Are you ever going to port those CDI Zelda games to Switch?" And then and they'll say, like, and they'll, no, say they'll, they'll say, they'll say, no comment. They'll say no, no, sir. But we'll have the music on our Nintendo streaming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, those music... soundtracks aren't bad. Tony, oh, they're, they're not bad. Tony Trippy was the composer, and I love that name. <laughs> Tony Trippy. <laughs> Tony Trippy. Surprised this least... wasn't Tommy Tallarico. Well, can we do the, the three degrees of separation now? Tony Trippy, Trip Hawkins. Or... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so. For the final part of the episode, we got to do our classic must play. Okay, stay away. I figure we'll do one for each game. Um, okay, <laughs> why not? I get, so I get more content. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if engagement, I was gonna social media engagement, pretty much. <laughs> gotta gotta get those blue sky numbers up. Um, anyhow, um, if I was gonna rank the three of them, I'd say Mad Dog one. Probably an okay. Mad Dog 2, probably also an okay. I would say, I'd call The Last Bound Hero a must-play, though, just because that game legit got laughs out of me, like, multiple times. Um, Yeah, like, that's how I would rank them from, like, worst to best. So I think they all get progressively better over time in mm -hmm. terms of, like, how funny they are. I mean, if I were to be stupid, they're all fucking must-plays. Like, they're all absolutely worth your time. Um. Though, if, if you are going to play these games, yeah, try to either play, like, the Wii version or the PS3 version, though you probably can't get it nowadays. I, I don't know. Is it still on the PS3 digital store? I'd have to go check, because I, I bought it years ago, like, when I was curious, so I just had it. Yeah, I, I mean, I... checked the store, though. Well, I can say this. The, the Wii version, when I bought it, I think I spent, like, 20 bucks on this. Yeah, Which it's is not. not yeah, yeah, it's not. So if you still have your Wii lying around and you want to play them, like I would, I would recommend that. Or you could just get um them on like was it PS um or or you get them on PC for free probably <laughs> just play yeah. them that way. Um oh they oh this has gone up apparently apparently it's now like fifty bucks on Wii. Sorry guys. Really? Yeah. According, according to eBay, I just looked at it. It's like yeah, it's like somebody selling it for sixty bucks. Wow, we, I wouldn't pay sixty bucks for it. I, I would, no. you know, look elsewhere. But um, <laughs> I think they're all worth playing genuinely. Um, but yeah, the one I think that was the the most that had the most entertainment overall was the last bounty hunter. Like that was probably the one that was the most enjoyable overall. But I liked all three of these games. You know, they're they're not masterpieces by any stretch of the imagination. But I had a I had a I had a blast playing these games. I, I had fun. And that's that's really all that matters at the end of the day with games. Are you having fun? And if you are, then it did its job. That's all that matters. That's it. All right. Well, I'm going. I'm going full cowboy head on this one. Yeehaw! I'm going must play all three of them. Nice, Yeehaw, brother. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh boy. Um. So yeah, the Mad Dog trilogy. That was way more fun than I thought it was going to be. Honestly, just watching the. Watching these just for the videos themselves <laughs> is worth it, like, entirely. And 
if you do want to collect the 3DO versions for whatever reason, they're not that bad. Like, I think I paid like 30, uh, I'm confused, uh, like 30 for this one and like 20 for this one. So that's not terrible for completing box 3DO games. Yeah. I, I can't recommend playing them on 3DO because they probably don't play all that well. No, they but, really don't. But, um, but, you know, but that's just that's the territory with like, you know, light gun games, you know. Now, yeah. if you it, have, it's it's like if you got House of the Dead Overkill for the Wii, would you play that with the Wii mode or the classic controller? You know what I mean? Mode, yeah, exactly. The Wii remote. I will say, if you have a CRT TV lying around and you have the light gun, these might be worth it. One hundred percent. Yeah, I do have a CRT hiding in the garage, but I don't really have any place to set it up. So, mm. unfortunately, I can't. But I mean, in that case, I would just play fucking Time Crisis. Like, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, we 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 we've started the the lovely American Laser Games collection, and yes, in the future we will cover because just about every game they did got ported to 3DO, like Who Shot Johnny Rock, Space Pirates, both Crime Patrol games. Um, there's another game they did called Fast Draw Showdown, which did not come out on 3DO. Um, was a WiiWare title in 2010, but obviously I can't get that anymore. Um, and then there was some other games they did. A game called Gallagher's Gallery. You know mm-hmm. the 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 comedian Gallagher. For those who who don't know who Gallagher I'm referring to, <laughs> the 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 guy whose his whole shtick was smashing watermelon. Somehow that made him famous. I don't get it, but whatever, right? You know what and I then, just realized that like Drake kind of drives me nuts. They use the same exact picture. I mean, it's the ball. same guy in both games. Yeah. It's the same it's, guy. It's the same exact picture, though. They just yeah. photoshopped it. They put but, all the work into the title there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but to be fair, that. it's the same guy. So it's the same guy. Yeah. It's the same guy. And an interesting Easter egg when you're playing the game, if you happen to see any um, like skulls with like blue um, targets on them, if you shoot them, it doubles your uh, ammo. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I think it's in the professor section in Mad Dog 2. There's like a Mad Dog McCree sign hanging in the background for some reason. That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And they also did another game called Shootout at Old Tucson, which I guess had a limited arcade release, was supposed to get a 3DO version, but never did. So, they have a short library of games, but I intend to beat every single one of these that I can get my hands on because yeah. I, I need more, especially the Crime Patrol games. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh boy. These are going to be prime material. And I look forward to it. I need more camp in my life. <laughs> so. Oh, gosh. oh Just... yes. Like this 90s fucking camp. I live for the shit. It's, it's so good. Best. I, I think Johnny Rock's still my favorite of all of them. But I haven't played it. So. Oh, you haven't? Oh, no. I haven't, like, like, like I haven't played any of these other games. I haven't played yeah. Space Pirates or anything. But I, I will intend to play all these. I mean, we'll play them all for the show. That twenty so, gangsters camp is just it's just best. Yeah, I can't I, best. I cannot wait. These will be so good. <laughs> nice. Guess um, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, I can't wait. That being said though, uh before we sign off, uh Casey, I know you had said you were getting back into streaming. Do you wanna like plug your um stuff yeah. before we go? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um so yeah, I am getting back. It's funny because uh Bill actually uh hit me up about the show, like right as I was like dusting off all my stuff. So I'm still getting, just getting back into it. But uh, Desert Level Gaming is my channel. Uh, I'm on Twitch and YouTube, but mostly we'll be on Twitch. Um, I will be playing some, uh, I will be playing some 3DO titles for sure. Um, and uh, maybe hopefully some some future titles that might, might grace the show, um, but, uh, and some old ones. So if you want to see some, uh, some Mad Dog or something else, just, uh, yeah, I'll play. I'll play anything. But uh, yeah, also trying to work down my backlog because I feel like I just I'm just so far behind in games right now. So yeah, but yeah, Desert Level Gaming on Twitch, um, easy to find. So thanks. Nice. You just got a new follower in me. I gotta make sure I did because I don't know if I have or not. I'll do that after this. But um, <laughs> that being said, uh, once again, guys, thank you for joining us on. I almost said gaming collecting. This isn't gaming collecting. <laughs> um, <laughs> on the 3DO experience. Uh, the 3DO experience can be found. Alex on- is under the table. No, she's probably at home <laughs> sleeping on the couch, knowing her. <laughs> but um, 
Uh, once again, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, you can find us on all the major podcasting platforms, particularly Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to check us out over on the Superpod Network. That is uh, superpodnetwork.com. A wonderful site where you can find a whole bunch of different shows, um, videos, blogs. Uh, we're about to be begin a, a series of blogs covering uh, our favorite Super Nintendo games, so that'll be fun. And also be sure to check out all the different shows over on the network, including Superpod Saga, Super Ghost Radio, Retro Rehab, Tommy's Video Game Ride Along, A Novel Console, Bar Silence, Fine Time, The Elder Trolls Gaming Podcast, Remember 64, Gaming Together, Friday Night Gamecast, and of course our three shows, Gaming and Collecting, The 3DO Experience, Geek Addicts, and of course The Retro Wildlands, and Press B to Cancel. And with that, everybody, once again, thank you for joining us, and we will see you all later. Bye bye. If you're not playing on a 3DO system, what are you playing with?